Viewers in this video today, I will try to talk about a router from Linksys. I will try to show you the basic settings of this router, how you will connect to the internet, and try to tell you about each option of the router. Let's get started. Here you can see details about the model of this router. The interface of all types of routers of this company is basically of this type. If you know every option about this router, then you can configure all types of routers of this model. Here is the window that you are currently seeing. This window shows the network map of this router. The network map is a thing where you can see what devices are connected to the router. Now the interface that you see now is basically called the status window. It means that the status of each module of the router can be seen from here or the status of the router can be seen from now on. From here you can know whether the router is connected to the internet or whether the internet connection is working properly and also whether your Wi-Fi connections are working properly or whether the Wi-Fi signals are online, you can see all these information. At the very top is first the network status where this device's connection to the router now indicates the status of the internet connection to the router. Next is Wi-Fi setting, there you can see two Wi-Fi names, one, two, four GHC and another five GHC, and now you can see your Wi-Fi password. After that the option you see is called parental control, from here you can only turn it off or on it here. Next option, guest access, or you can say create a separate access for guest, from now you can only turn guest option on or off. In the next option, network map, you can see all the devices on the network from now on. You can use the option to add new devices from here. Here you can see some information about your network such as Wi-Fi WPS. Some necessary information is shown here. You can see the Wi-Fi password. You can also see how the device on your network is connected. We will now dive back into the network map and look at the options in detail. We can see that there is an option to measure internet usage. From there, we can see how much bandwidth our devices are consuming and how much data they have used. From now on, we will be able to find out the different types of devices that our router is communicating with by filtering them in different ways. Guest access through this option if you want, you can let the guests who come to your home to use the internet very easily and you can set various limitations on it from now on, such as what type of network to use. You can set the password of the guest network separately, the maximum number of people. You can now control the access allowed on the guest network. Parental control, from now on you can control the devices inside this router, which devices will get access to the internet, which sites will be restricted, which you will not be able to use or set the time. The media prioritization tool of your Linksys Smart Wi-Fi router allows you to give bandwidth allocation to devices, applications, and games that connect to streaming or real-time media services. In order for this feature to work, the computer or device that you need to prioritize should be currently connected to your router's network. Aside from devices, you can also choose applications or online games which you want to allocate higher bandwidth priority. To do this, simply repeat steps 1 to 3, and instead of choosing devices, select applications and online games from the available drop-down list. There is an option to test the speed of bandwidth, but it doesn't work properly. It is suggested to check the speed through another website. The next option is external storage. From here you can use an external drive or external storage via the router's USB port, which you can access to any device via the router's FTP or use as an FTP server, or set up a media server through it. You can since I don't have any such external drive, so THTS why I couldn't show it manually. Now we enter the router settings. First of the connectivity settings is the wider list settings where you can set up the name and password for 2, 4 GHC and 5 GHC. After that there is router password where you can set up router admin password then router firmware update and then pin setup and at the bottom router light on or off option. Next is the internet settings. Basically through the internet settings you have to configure the broadband connection. You can see that this router is connected to the broadband service through a static IP. This router can be connected to broadband in many other modes such as DHCP, POPO, PPDP, L2DP, bridge mode, wireless repeater mode, wireless bridge. Where I have to take POPO connection, the service provider provides us with a username and a password which must be entered correctly in the space shown on the screen to complete the connection. 
Besides, it is possible to complete internet connection in many ways from this type of router. You can see here there are many more options through which different types of service providers provide internet connection. There are many connections which can be remotely connected through other internet connection. Many types of internet service providers block their MAC address or keep MAC address blind. If you need to change or clone the MAC address, then you can clone the MAC address from this place that I have shown. Normally the connection with our router is called local area network. Those who need to set up a configuration can go to this local network and set up the configuration from this place. For example, if you have created a dynamic network, here you can see. You will find that dynamic is ticked, and in that case you can change the DNS as you wish. You can change your local area IP from now on. Routers of this model have advanced routing option inside and inside advanced routing option you will see an option called NOT which means network address translation NOT is the process of mapping an internet protocol IP address to another by changing the header of IP packets while in transit by a router. You can use this option on this type of router if you want. The next option is VLAN and you can do VLAN routing or VLAN configuration very easily on this type of router. Now you can see on the screen that there are many options for VLAN, VLAN definition. A virtual local area network, VLAN, is a virtualized connection that connects multiple devices and network nodes from different LANs into one logical network. The next option is administrator. From here you can access various administrator settings like local area management access. Up and pin application layer gateway can change the settings of different types of modules from here. If you are using an IP phone through this router, here you need to adjust the SIP settings. If we enter the troubleshooting options of this router, we can see that the name of the status option is the name of the connected device. Then the MAC address is shown, then the IP address that is connected to the IP, and then the medium that is connected to it is shown. As the very first device is connected through LAN, there is an option button named DHCP Client Table. If you want, you can print this entire table. You can now see I'm inside Diagnostic Tools. From here you can first see that I can ping inside IPv4, I can know if there is any ping problem. After that you can see the option named Trace Route. Through this option we can easily do all the tasks of Trace Route. After that there is Restart option. From there we can restart this router device. After that there is Router Diagnostic Report from where we can get a details report related to network. After that there is Router Configuration. From now we can back up our configuration or settings of this router or if there is any file backed up earlier. we can restore it, then there is the firmware option. From now on we can perform the tasks related to the router's firmware. Then there is the internet address, that is, the address through which you can access the router remotely. And then there is reset, means you can restore the router to factory reset as it was when you bought the router. The next option is logs. This option is found in more or less all types of routers. With this option you can see different types of logs used by your router if you leave this lock option open or on. You can see on the right side of this screen there are many options, inside it there is an option print that means you can print the log from here or you can open it through another browser and view it in detail. The next option you can see is wireless settings. This router is divided into two wireless bands, one at 2GHC and the other at 5GHC. Comparatively 2GHC to 5GHC are more powerful and able to cover more area, but unfortunately some old devices cannot receive this 5GHC signal. From these settings we can change the Wi-Fi signal names and their signal ranges and radio frequencies from here. The next option is MAC filtering. Through this option, if you want to block users in your router who you think you want to block from using the internet, you must collect the MAC ID of that user from your network map. Wi-Fi protected setup. In this option a pin is generated and through that pin you can directly access the router from your Wi-Fi signal. Basically it seems very dangerous to me because most of the times I have seen uninvited users enter the router from this WP's pin and then turn it off. The next option seems to me to be an option to schedule Wi-Fi, in which case you can create a schedule of when the Wi-Fi will be on and when it will be off as per your requirement. For advanced users, you can configure your firewall settings on this page. Below are the default settings. The DMZ Demilitarized Zone feature allows one network device to be exposed to the internet for use of a special purpose service, such as online gaming. The router forwards all the ports at the same time to the DMZ device. The Dynamic Domain Name System DDNS, service lets you assign a fixed domain name to a dynamic internet IP address. 
This is very useful if you are hosting your own website or if you have a server set up behind your router. OpenVPN Server is a feature of the Linksys Smart Wi-Fi Routers, WRT3200ACM, WRT1900AC, WRT1900ACS, and WRT1200AC that enables the customers to give access to their home network using the OpenVPN client. It adds a simple server and easy client setup experience for a home router with virtual private network VPN solution and an added security without a lot of technical settings. Before using this feature, make sure of the following. Make sure to download and install the OpenVPN client software. To download the software in your Windows registered or Mac registered computer, Android trademark or iOS registered device, click here. Make sure that your router has the latest firmware which supports OpenVPN.